Michael Bricker is regarded as one of the greatest improvisers in jazz history, right up there with John Coltrane, who in turn was one of his primary influences. And it is believed by many that Brecker took jazz improvisation to a whole new level. And I'm not just referring to his unbelievable chops as a player, but mainly to his overall musicality. Now, I don't know about you, but as a guitar player, I don't have the chops to recreate on my instrument what Michael Brecker did on his. As a result, I have to take it down several notches and isolate a specific concept or idea that I want to incorporate into my playing. However, before I can do this successfully, I need to pick a strategy, which in turn brings me to what I read in Michael Brecker's biography that he did every day for an entire year. So what did he do? <laughs> he wrote and practiced a blues solo every day. And if you're about to abandon this video in disbelief, please allow me to elaborate. Brecker wasn't doing this to learn how to play the blues over a 1-4-5 progression. When we mention blues in a modern jazz context, we are often referring to a 12-bar form which isn't necessarily limited to just dominant 7th chords over the 1, 4, and 5. But back to Brecker, why do you think he wrote one of these blues every day? Most jazz musicians agree that it is due to the fact that the blues form, which lasts a mere 12 bars, is the most economical vehicle over which to develop a new musical idea. Simply put, Michael Brecker was using the blues form to compose an etude. And if you're not familiar with the word etude, it is French for study. For centuries, the classical masters have written etudes with the sole purpose of mastering a given musical concept. And this can be in relation to technique, melody, harmony, or whatever needs to be mastered. Etudes are not just short in duration, but they are also more musical, memorable, and fun than just playing an exercise. For instance, let's say you are learning some new scales. Instead of just playing the scales over and over, you can practice them as part of an etude that achieves the same goal in a particular musical context. This is exactly what Brecker was doing to develop new vocabulary, but it is as well an integral part of what many great musicians do during their practice time. So now that you understand the importance of the 12 bar jazz etude, let me show you how you can write your own in order to accomplish any musical goal you desire. And please stick with me because later I will give you a link where you can download a zip file with PDFs of all the tunes and examples that we will cover entirely for free. So I'd like to begin with Solar by Miles Davis, which if you don't already know, was originally written by guitarist Chuck Wayne. And this 12 bar piece is an excellent progression to master the rudimentary changes that you'll frequently encounter when improvising over minor standards. Note that it features a rich selection of harmonic cadences to practice. And for the first two measures we have a C minor. And then, starting on the third measure, we have the first of four sets of two five ones. The first one resolving to F major 7, and then another one resolving to E flat major 7, then another one resolving to D flat major 7, and finally a minor 2 5 resolving back to the one chord, C minor. So that's a lot of two fives, two five ones that you can practice over. And if you do this uh, in different keys, you'll cover a lot of harmonic territory in a very short period of time. Now, before I proceed, I'd like to suggest 
two ways you can use this composition, as well as the ones I will later cover, to master different musical concepts. Number one, you can create a backing track and practice improvising over the chord progression. Number two, compose an etude over the given changes consisting of vocabulary we would like to program our ears to hear and our fingers to execute when improvising. And this, of course, is my preferred choice and most likely what Michael Brecker did. Why? Because if you just practice improvising over the changes with nothing written out beforehand, you are most likely just playing what you already know. Maybe you'll come across a new idea every now and then, but even if you do, the chances that you'll remember the idea the next day are slim. So it's a hit or miss exercise with no specific goal or direction. On the other hand, if you take your time to write an etude, say comprised of ideas from transcriptions you may have done or maybe original two five lines, you are deliberately practicing and thus programming new vocabulary that you know will sound good from beginning to end. Of course, for this to be effective, as in the previous suggestion, you also have to be sure to practice it in different keys and tempos. Also, keep in mind that the more etudes you write over the given progression, the more vocabulary you'll develop for any standard with related changes. You can also use any of these compositions as a starting point and alter the progression to fit your needs. So here you can see a progression for which I use solar as a starting point for a personal etude. And here in the uh, first measure, I'm using a uh, major seven chord instead of the uh, one minor that we saw in uh, solar. And instead of going uh, with a 2-5 to the 4 major chord like uh, we did in solar, I'm going back to the 1 chord, but I'm using a minor 2-5, resolving to a 1 major chord. And I'm doing that because I want something that I can practice that uh, minor 2-5 to 1 major that we encounter and say a lot of Cole Porter tunes like Night and Day, I Love You, What Is This Thing Called Love, and many more. And then uh, in the third measure, we go uh, to the four chord, just like in solar. Uh, and then we have a two five to E flat major seven, which would be the uh, flat three major seven. This is modal interchange from the parallel minor key. And notice that that E flat major seven is followed in the next measure by a A flat seven sharp 11. And this is what we encounter in measures seven and eight of Stella by Starlight, and also several other tunes. That four chord, which is always a major seven, going to a flat seven dominant with a sharp 11. So, <laughs> okay, and the last line, of course, we have a minor 2-5, but this time resolving to a 1 minor, which in turn starts for the last two measures a 1, 6, 2, 5 cadence in minor. And there are countless uh, minor tunes that have that cadence in it. For example, uh, Summertime, uh, Alone Together, Softly as in a Morning Sunrise, Lullaby of Birdland, and many others. And here's another one of my favorites, Bird Blues. This is one of the richest harmonies packed into a 12-bar form. It refers to the changes Charlie Parker used on Blues for Alice. And this starts on a 
major one chord and it's followed by a minor 2-5 to the 6 minor and that 6 minor in turn starts a 2-5 a major 2-5 to the C minor which in turn starts a 2-5 to the 4 chord which in this instance is a dominant 4. And right after that we have three measures of two fives descending chromatically. We have B flat to E flat, A to D, A flat to D flat, and then we conclude with a two five going to the F. Last two measures we have we have a major one six two five progression which is also rhythm changes another great one using the bird blues progression with a different melody is freight train which was recorded by John Coltrane and Kenny Burrell and instead of analyzing it here I recommend my lesson titled the Bird Blues Diet. In it, I show you how you can use a three chord one, four, five blues and gradually add more chords to it until you arrive at the full Bird Blues progression. As a matter of fact, in volume one of my Bebop Guitar Improv series books and online course, I use this procedure that is 12 bar etudes to teach you incrementally how to apply all the bebop melodic concepts using different chords and scales. I then guide you step by step on how to write and practice your own etudes using all these different concepts. And you know what? It saves tons of time. That is once you master them over a 12 bar structure you will be prepared to eventually do it over most 32 measure standards. So for those interested, I've placed links in the info section down below this video for both the Bird Blues Diet video and the Bebop Guitar Improv Series website. Next, let's look at another uh, wonderful progression over 12 bars. Goodbye Pork Pie Hat by Charles Mingus. For the more advanced player, this is a great progression to practice over dominants that don't progress through the cycle of fifths. The challenge here is to create a smooth transition between the chords. And as we can also see here in Pussycat Doos, Mingus was really fond of using dominants in non-conventional ways. Yep, he was definitely ahead of his time. Another one by Mingus which is a lot of fun to play is Nostalgia in Times Square. And this one features several two fives, but is definitely easier than the previous ones we saw to uh, play. Here's another favorite piece by Horace Silver. And this one is not in a 12 bar format. It's actually shorter, just 10 bars. Here we begin with a minor two five to G minor and that in turn starts a uh, major 2-5 to C flat major 7 or B major 7 whatever you want to call it and notice that that C7 is simply a tritone substitution of F sharp resolving to the C flat major or B major that is immediately followed by a minor 2-5 resolving to B flat major 7 and here we have that minor 2 5 resolving to a 1 major 7 that I showed you earlier in my personal uh, etude progression and that again is the uh, cadence we encounter frequently in those Cole Porter tunes like Night and Day and that's followed by a regular major 2 5 to an a major 7 and in the last line we have E flat uh, half diminished to a D7 
flat five, which is simply a tritone substitute of A flat seven, resolving to uh, D flat major seven. So in essence, again, it's that minor, minor two five resolving to a one major. And the last two measures, we have a, a dominant seven flat five, going to the tritone substitution of F7, which is a, a B7 flat, and finally resolving to B flat major seven. A lot of harmonic territory to cover, again, only in 10 measures, wow. Another great minor blues is Israel by John Carisi. And this has been recorded by Bill Evans, Jerry Mulligan, and many others. And I especially like to recommend this one to practice over the progression of major seven chords starting on measure seven, as well as the turnaround on measures 11 and 12. This one is a great one to practice improvising and developing vocabulary over sus four chords. It's called 81 and it was written by Ron Carter. And if you want to hear uh, Miles, Herbie, and Wayne blowing over it, be sure to check out the album ESP by Miles Davis, a true classic. If you want some more 12 bar tunes to practice over sus4 chords, Keith Jarrett has several among his early compositions. This one is called The Fields We Know. Note that it is non-functional harmony, so it is not the typical cadences you'll find in most standards. Another one by Jared is Semblance, and this one is not uh, sus4 oriented except for the initial chord, but although it has some movement over the cycle of fifths using dominance and major seventh chords, it is also non-functional harmony. And here's another favorite, Isotope by Joe Henderson, which also includes several sus4 chords towards the end. This one is based on functional harmony and several of the dominant chords that don't move through the cycle of fifths here can be analyzed as chromatic approach chords to the upcoming dominant. And they are also sometimes simply tritone substitutes. There are several other ones in this format comprised mainly of sus4 chords, such as uh, Follow Your Heart by John McLaughlin from uh, his initial recording extrapolation. Then it's also worth mentioning uh, the uh, main section to Aliniqui Valley by Herbie Hancock, which consists of a 12 bar format with sus4 chords. And I've included all of these in the zip file, which you can download for free simply by registering for my newsletter at jazzguitar.richiezellen.com forward slash premium. And you will find the link in the freebie section of that page. And by the way, you'll also get to watch my free two-part masterclass titled Decoding the Bebop Algorithm, as well as download a copy of my ebook. 20th century jazz guitar. Another great tune that has a 12 bar section before going to the bridge is Antonio Carlos Jobim's Bossa Nova Wave. As a matter of fact, I did an entire video lesson demonstrating how this is really a blues in disguise. Nonetheless, those 12 bars feature some very useful harmony to practice improvising over that you can employ over many other standards. If you want a great 12 bar tune to practice your Lydian and Lydian dominant scales, check out Blues for Wood by Woody Shaw. Note that you have a D flat seven sharp 11 over measures five, six, and nine. Here you would use your D flat uh, Lydian dominant scale. And then we have a B major seven sharp 11 over the 10th measure where you can use your uh, B uh, Lydian scale. Okay, before I conclude, let me give you a list of additional 12 bar compositions and a brief description of the harmony they feature. And don't forget that they are all available in the free download I mentioned earlier. The Kicker by Joe Henderson. This is a major blues featuring modal interchange chords from the parallel minor key. 
Three tunes which are great to practice over dominant sevenths outside of the one, four, five routine are Sweet Georgia Bright by Charles Lloyd, Francing, also known as No Blues by Miles Davis, and Henniger Flats by David Pritchard, which was recorded by Gary Burton. And for a workout over a one major seven bass blues with lots of movement featuring dominant seven sharp 11 and minor seven flat five chords, I recommend Serene by Eric Dolphy. And if you want to practice over dominant sevenths over six four time, your best bet is West Coast Blues by Wes Montgomery. And don't forget that in any of these progressions, wherever there is a standalone dominant seventh chord, you can proceed the first half of its duration with its related two minor seven, whose root would lie a perfect fifth down. So for example, if you encounter a G7, you can occupy the first half of its duration with a D minor seven. And this gives you the option to develop and practice over two fives in different contexts. And on that note, I would like to conclude this video. As usual, I appreciate your likes and comments, and I'm hoping you have enjoyed and learned something new today from this lesson. I'd especially be curious to hear how many of you are already Im implementing some of the ideas that I shared. So until we meet again, I assume that you already know the drill. Practice, 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 take a break and then practice some more. But don't quit your day job just yet. <laughs> May peace be with you.